subscribe to our youtube channel press the bell icon and stay entertained tracking milestones of an incredible journey spanning 30 years rehman music sheets i think he's a person who keeps his antennas open his mind open absorbs a lot of things and he's naturally gifted asha ji had sung for so many years in the industry and what super hits but rangila rangila is one of her top hits with mr ele raja what would happen is i once i've learned the song he again is another person who wouldn't talk very much and his arranger would deal with me and in the orchestra played uh, there was not so much communication in that sense that he's he's not a person who speaks a lot 1995 bombay the first film when kavita krishnamurthy sang for a r rahman besides two songs she also sang alaps for the background music of bombay and then came rangila rahman's first original score for a hindi film oh i love that song i love pyare ye jaane kaisa hai i love that song i like the words i i love the tune because if when you go to the antara part of the song it is so old world tara ra ri 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 da ri ri ra ri ri it could almost be a song from 1960s da ri di da ra it could be a song which even shamshad begum can sing you know what i mean so i it's got a lot of old world charm i remember suresh wadkar and my, myself both of both of us were there and we did our parts separately first i would say pyari ye jaane kaisa hai then rehman will say can you do something with ye so say pyari ye jaane kaisa hai those dynamics would come ha huh? he would say can you do something there can you do the dynamics whatever he would say and then you would come out with it like that and that's how it happened again once again i always uh, um, i always have to tell rahman ji that he'll always give me a line which is very high somewhere i'll have to struggle with the high notes but when i go to sing for him i was prepared to battle and say okay ek to uncha wala line aayega himmat mat haro cuz he sings very high na unka to z scale pe gana gaate hain to mujhe bhi himmat rakhna padta tha <laughs> Do you consider Rangila to be a major turning point in Hindi film music? Absolutely. Asha ji had sung for so many years in the industry and what super hits. But Rangila is one of her top hits. She has the song she has sung for Rangila is amazing. She can say at this point in her career she could she can claim that it was some it it falls amongst one of her best songs. Then I also like uh, Hai Ram that song very beautiful song with Hari and uh, Swarnalata ji. beautiful song very very beautiful song so i think rangila was a remarkable remarkable album ma'am rangila the entire album was mixed in a manner which was quite unusual for a hindi film did it surprise you yes but i feel that with everything he does like all my songs that have been mixed as i told you sometimes when the songs come out in the market it's only then i get an idea of how my voice has been used so i think he has a vision of what he wants to do and he knows exactly what he wants there is no like acha acha you know what uh, i've never heard him saying okay uh, you know maybe you can do it this way no he tells you what it is and when you're in front of the mic he says okay can you vary it on these phrases as as you like and you vary it he quietly just lets you do what he wants and as you're doing it i think his mind is very clear on how he's going to handle your voice which are the lines he wants to keep finally he cuts and pastes also so when the cutting and pasting happens and when the song comes into the market like when i heard mangal pande and all these songs i felt oh my gosh it this sounds so different to what i sang because he has taken some nice phrases from here some improvisations from here and put it all together so it's like a box of uh, magic that opens up and you really don't know how you're going to sound when the song finally comes in the market i've always felt that about him that he does a lot of editing post uh, you know post work after the singer has finished singing and gone he does a lot of work over the voice and the song dil se a milestone in the career of both ar rahman and mani ratnam the entire album of six songs continues to have a cult following in dil se the song satrangi re expresses seven stages of love yes you and sonu nigam seem to be in a different zone altogether in this song sonu did a wonderful singing in that song and surprisingly when i said the dialogues ishq par zor nahi 
th that kind of thing. So when I said it, I said it. But you know, when the song came out, you can see how he has made it sound like a, I'm not a person who speaks, I'm a singer, but still he made me speak those words and how dramatic it sounds and how it becomes an important part of the song. Right. So many of my friends told me, look, you sound, is that you? You sound so different and so nice that we didn't expect you to say that kind of stuff. So I think he did a wonderful job with that song too. Ishq par zor nahi hai ye wo Atish Ghalib. We had never heard Ghalib's poetry the way you rendered it in the song. Uh, it was so unusual. Were you scared while doing it? No, no, I was not scared, you see, because I had sung many songs for him. He was not a new music director for me. And I'd had, I wasn't really scared. But there is always, um, there is always something that you learn at every recording. So it was uh, how to say these things without, um, without my voice cracking. You know what I mean? Those things worried me. Was it within the capacity of my voice? I had to make sure it doesn't crack. So there was, I had to be very careful when I did all these things. So it, it's a good feeling after singing for many years, if you're still on your toes in, a, in front of a recording mic, if you have to stand on your toes, I think that's a very good thing. I think all through our lives, we should stand on our toes when we are doing some work. You know, we cannot be complacent and we cannot say we've done it all because there'll be something that you can't do, you know. So these are all learning experiences and I, I, I also enjoyed this process. And your alaps and hummings too added a very eerie kind of a layer to the song. I don't know, I haven't thought about it. I thought it's a very nice part of the song and uh, I think it all added into making the song um, into a nice structure. And once again, I must tell you that he does, uh, he does tweak the voice quality. He makes it sound the way he wants to, you know. In a lot of ways, he does a lot of... Um, mastering of the voice after we finish singing. Dilse is considered to be a benchmark even for Rahman's own work, a rare treat. How would you evaluate Dilse music? There is a time when a music director uh, is at his most productive self. There's a peak time of the flow of music, the flow of thoughts as a composer. There is a peak time and I've seen this peak time with Lakshmi Kant Pyarelal. I have seen it with R.D. Burman. I have seen Salil Chaudhary. I have seen like Nayar Saab that everything that comes out seems to be uh, like a box of magic and it comes out so well. I think Rehman was also in, in that peak time that whatever he did, his albums, he was at his creative best during Rangila, Dilse, Pukar, all these films. He was doing so, so well, actually, so well. Starting from Lakshmi Kant Pyarelalji, you work with all these stalwarts of film music. You also work with Ilya Raja, sir. Not too much, but a little bit, yes. Little bit, yeah, yes. Yeah, but you have worked with both Mr. Yes, Rahman yes. as well as Ilya Raja, sir. Though there can't be any comparison yet, can you explain how different or similar they are in their working styles? See, again, the working style is different because with Mr. Ilya Raja, what would happen is, I, once I've learned the song, he again is another person who wouldn't talk very much and his arranger would deal with me and in the orchestra played and I uh, sang, he would just through the monitoring, he would say, uh, you know, like this line, you could sing it like that. And But he was a very silent man, you know. Uh, there's not so much communication in that sense that he's, he's not a person who speaks a lot. And he's, he's a very close friend of my husband. So I, the only time I see him, my husband and him talking a lot, I get surprised because uh, Ile Raja sir has already never spoken more than two, three sentences with me. <laughs> he's a very quiet man. But with Rahman, once again, I must tell you that because he's much younger to me, I was able to uh, think of him as a, uh, as a much younger person with whom I could be you know, uh, and again, one thing which I find uh, wonderful about Rehmanji is once you come to the studio, he just talks about work. I've never heard him talking about other music directors, other singers, uh, nothing like that. You know, he's so engrossed in his own work. He does his own work. 
and he's so sweet natured he's so gentle he makes the singer so comfortable in front of the mic and and also another sometimes when there's no recordist i've seen him coming and putting the mic and you know doing the whole sound himself so there's absolutely um um uh, no egoistic uh, uh, approach to anything which is so wonderful to see a young music director without any ego welcoming uh, you know new thoughts in a song new improvisations in a song allowing the singer to do what they want all that are very very pleasant moments i've had with him you have sang for him hindi songs and tamil songs yes yes many believe that no matter what rehman does outside tamil nadu but his best work remains restricted to south india how would you react to that oh no i think his hindi songs are amazing too i i won't say i think he's done fantastic work both in the south and the north his contribution in for his bollywood films have been amazing you know you see pukar you see so many films uh, amazing uh, songs he has done in the north so i would say by and large how many songs he has done in the south and how many is done in the north i don't know numbers but if you ask about contribution and style and uh, sometimes even introducing new singers to the industry i think he's of course in the south he's introduced so many new singers who have done well because of him and even the north he's always experimented and always take and see how many new singers are singing for him today so i think uh, his contribution has been equally brilliant in uh, bollywood that's what i would say there have been many indian musicians who could connect with global sensibilities but they always had a very niche audience uh, rehman could connect with popular culture uh, how do you explain this what is so different about his music i think this was his uh, also his um, uh, fusion approach to songs and i think slum dog millionaire of course getting an oscar became an international thing and the whole world's eyes opened up to rehman and then his uh, working with andrew lloyd webber you know these international uh, uh, films that he started doing took him out of india and again he was able to mold himself and change himself you know because their way of thinking of background scores and music is very different they never overload their films in the west so he was able to understand what exactly they want and he was able to fit into that scene also he had he had that flexibility i think he's a person who keeps his antennas open his mind open absorbs a lot of things and he's naturally gifted प्यार करती है प्यार धोखा है प्यार ढलती छाया है देखो फिर ना करना गेला प्यार ही धड़कनों की कहानी है प्यार है हसी दासता कविता कृष्णमूर्ति kept singing for Rehman She narrates stories behind these songs and reveals her favorite Rehman songs by other singers like KS Chitra and Sadhna Sargam Kavita Krishnamurthy continues in our next episode stay with us Subscribe to our YouTube channel press the bell icon and stay entertained